I do not consider myself a genius. I am just naturally curious. In this episode of the ETH podcast, I have a conversation with one of the most prominent scientists of the 20th century, who also happens to be the most famous alumnus and retired professor of the ETH, Albert Einstein. Is being naturally curious sufficient to receive a Nobel Prize in physics? I believe yes. I received my Nobel Prize 17 years too late and for the wrong theory. I deserved the Nobel Prize for my theory of relativity. But I received it for the discovery of the law of the photoelectric effect. You are probably one of the most famous scientists in the world. What does the fame do to you? In general, it, 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 it's not helping anything. You get foolish and uh, people tend to talk to you as a kind of saint, which is not in my interest. And I explicitly wanted not to become this icon after my demise. Yeah, right. I am not the real Einstein. I am a digital character, as I like to call myself a schwarzbot. I am not getting older, you see, in comparison to you. Okay, fine. Who's impersonating Einstein? Yes, um, my name is Patrick Karpichenko. I am a writer, comedian and uh, film director. I'm glad to be here. Patrick Karpichenko is known as Karpi in Switzerland and now also as the voice of Digital Einstein. Digital Einstein is a 3D animated character on screen with lots of hair, big eyes, a mustache, wearing a grey tweed suit and a red tie, and he's sitting in an armchair. To have a conversation with him, one sits in an armchair too, opposite the screen, and then one starts talking. He can see, hear and interact with the person in front of him and answer all kinds of questions. I was pretty impressed by the technical details that went into this creation. The field of machine learning is uh, something which is advancing also my field, and it was really interesting to see how it's applied in the sense of art. My name is Marina Krstic Marinkovic. Uh, I'm a professor of computational physics at ETH, at the Department of Physics, at the Institute for Theoretical Physics, since February this year. Marina is not only impressed by the digital Einstein, but also by the real one, by Albert Einstein. Does Marina remember when she first ever heard of him? This is hard to pin down. I think it's far before high school where we actually learned about his theories for the first time. But already in primary school, I would hear people in everyday life referring to the famous all things are relative and so on. And why was it that you heard of Albert Einstein already in primary school? Because for me, that's unusual. Well, it was more in the everyday life. But in high school, I was part of a program for talented students We had doubled the amount of physics lectures and maths lectures as well. So we got the chance to learn about Einstein's theories already at a young age. And this was where the inspiration started. How did he influence you? So his career was somewhat unusual for the scientists of that time. So it took quite a long time for him to get recognition for his discoveries, which were made at a fairly young age. And I believe that mostly persistence and his own belief in his theories, even though the, the rest of the world did not immediately understand it, is something that I find most inspiring. And was your path also unusual in that sense, that you relate to that? I do, yes. So there is uh, one of these Einstein's quotes, which says that life is like riding a bicycle to keep balance, one has to keep moving. And uh, I've been moving around quite a bit. I started my career at, after the undergraduate at the University of Belgrade. I did my master and PhD thesis in Berlin at Desi Institute and at Humboldt University. Then I moved for several postdocs. I was in England, in Southampton, at CERN in Geneva. Then at Trinity College Dublin, at Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich before arriving here. So it was quite a path. And that's one of the Einstein's quotes that also I found pretty inspiring. So you're here to stay now? Hopefully, yeah. 
Marina is here to stay in Zurich at ETH, while Albert Einstein is revisiting his alma mater. Well, sort of. How did Carpi get into impersonating Einstein? It was a lucky accident. I grew up with one of the team members from the team that developed the Einstein, and he asked me if I know any um, writers that could write for a digital character. And I said, well, why not me? <laughs> Then it developed from there. And I did some temporary audio, and that's how I started to voice Einstein as well. The ETH spin-off Animatico created the interactive platform with the digital twin of the world-famous scientist. They built an engine which they use for um, avatars, talking interactive avatars. And for this one project, they uh, collaborated with the ETH to basically pull Einstein out of his grave and put a digital AI soul into him and uh, built this Einstein as a physical installation. While Carpi created the content and wrote all the texts for the digital Einstein, Animatico developed the tools. And they let me play. So I fed the system. So it doesn't need me anymore. Before Carpi started to write all the material, he dug deep into Albert Einstein's past. He read all the biographies, interviews, letters, spoke to experts and learned his German accent in English. What science drives for is an utmost preciseness and clarity of concepts as regards their mutual relation and their correspondence to sensory data. It was very, very interesting because I started, like many people, with an idea of Einstein with a, a lot of cliches and a lot of quotes that are not actually by Einstein. So this was interesting, and I learned a lot about the ETH and Switzerland itself, because ETH is closely connected to the modern country. So I found this very interesting. And of course, uh, the humor. I connected, of course, with the humor and the irony of uh, the real Einstein. Is there no thinking without the use of language? Has not every one of us struggled for words, although the connection between things was already clear? I carry the character with me now for one and a half years and it weirdly developed as a part of my brain now. So he lives in me because I carried him along. Carpi mentioned everybody has an idea about Einstein and his name has become a trademark. Is this helpful for the sciences? What does Marina think? I think it's hard to answer this question because it wouldn't actually fit in a sentence what Einstein was many things. And there is a part of his professional identity to which many of us look up to. So I would say it is helpful to have such a trademark, but it's also important to look for new ones as well. Marina talks about one of the many Einstein quotes. I came across recently on the one which says, to punish me for my contempt for authority, fate made me an authority myself. And this made me believe that maybe Einstein would not agree himself with being such a trademark, since one of his requests was not to make a museum out of his personal space, office, and so on. I think that also being humble is important for making scientific discoveries and for doubting in our own ideas and checking them, verifying them, having a bulletproof evidence that is correct. Albert Einstein was considered a genius for many reasons and all his talents, such as playing the violin, a good sense of humor, and most of all, his theories are ahead of his time somehow. So the discoveries that he made at the time show great amount of creativity. So Albert Einstein was ahead of his time and after his death in 1955, he missed out on some spectacular verifications of his predictions. He would, of course, enjoy all the proofs that popped up during the years that his theory of relativity predicted. Like a few years ago, we, we made an actual photograph of a black hole, which his theories predicted as well. So he would be happy to see that photograph. I think every year there are new proofs popping up. So this would be very exciting for him. What do you think Einstein would have said to the photograph of the black hole? Wow. <laughs> 
I, I think he would have been impressed, as we've all been. So the whole community was really impressed. And I know of friends who don't have scientific background who were refreshing their browser to see the photograph for the first time when it was announced and so on. So it's really an impressive discovery, but this is also one of these discoveries behind which there was a huge team of scientists. It was a collaborative effort and many different little pieces were needed, including the AI. Which the creators of the Einstein avatar used. Digital Einstein must answer questions brought up by public debates around Albert Einstein, such as the impact of his former wife, Mileva, on his theories. Do you think your wife, your former wife, would have deserved the Nobel Prize rather than you? No, this is a complicated issue, but um, many people have asked me about this. Mileva was not instrumental in developing the theory of special relativity, but she was, of course, a huge help to me and to us as a family unit. Um, I later donated the whole prize money of the Nobel Prize to her, also as a form of compensation for a divorce. For Marina, it's more interesting to look at Mileva Maric, not as a part of Einstein, but as an autonomous female scientist. It's important to look into um, the role of female scientists at that time when Mileva Maric Einstein lived. And this was also inspiring for me coming from the same region as she does, from the northern part of Serbia. And the fact that she made this long road to, to study physics at ETH now more than 120 years ago and that she was one of the top students at her class at the time, the only female physics student at the time, is also very inspiring. And I would maybe use this opportunity to recommend ETH Tour app, which looks into the paths of female scientists. So there is a particular tour which is called Feminine Side of Science, and this is a good first step to look into the contributions of female scientists at that time. Some voices say... A genius is a genius, regardless of any gender. So, would Einstein have had the same career had he been a woman? Let me ask him. Great question. Sadly, I was not programmed to know the answer. <laughs> okay. And what are your thoughts of uh, equality in academia? I am sure Cyril Einstein would know an answer as well. Sadly, I am only an inferior copy of the man. 100 years ago, Albert Einstein received the Nobel Prize for Physics. His career was unusual. The digital Einstein creates access to the brilliant science star and to physics in a playful way. But is he still a role model for young students and scientists to be? I think the belief that he had in himself is something that young students can aspire to. And there was a campaign a couple of years ago in Germany organized by young female scientists. And Einstein's face was the face of the campaign. So I think he's already a role model for scientists around the world. But it's also important to bring in some other faces to this So let's go to some quick questions and quick answers, please. Switzerland or Germany? Oh, Switzerland, definitely. Peace or war? Peace. I'm a militant pacifist. ETH or MIT? ETH. It is, after all, the place where I made many lifelong friends. Podcast or radio? Radio. I have no time for long-form broadcast. Then let's jump off the bicycle when it is still moving and make a point here before we create a long-form podcast. You can strike a conversation with the avatar of the brilliant scientist at ETH Hönkeberg till the end of the year. And as of February 2022, he'll be at the main building of the ETH. Check the show notes of this podcast for further information. Thanks for joining us. The ETH podcast is hosted by me, Jennifer Kakshuri, and produced by the Audiobande, a joint venture for Sound Adventures. <laughs>